About five years ago, my husband Sean and I were struggling to pay our mortgage after he'd been forced to change jobs and I'd taken time off work to have our first child. His new position in the finance division of a major company paid a lot less than his last job and we were going to the wall financially. It looked as if we were going to have to go to my parents for a big loan to make sure we didn't lose our dream house and end up on the streets. Eventually, after six months of working himself nearly to death, a much better job came up in Sean's division. The salary and bonuses he would earn from the promotion would set us up for years and not only pay for the house, but allow us a holiday and a few luxuries as well. I can't underestimate how much we needed Sean to get that job. He was good enough and worked hard enough, but the fact that he wasn't senior in the company might count against him. A couple of weeks after the position was advertised and after Sean had written an excellent application that he had submitted to his boss, I found myself dragged along to a night out with the families of his co-workers. As the boys from the office let their hair down to celebrate the end of the financial year, we girls joined in as well. I hadn't had a night out since my child was born, and I guess I went a little over the top with my drinking. As the night wore on and my husband, a little worse for wear, retreated to a couch with a few of his mates to keep on drinking, I felt a hand across my back and looked up to see the head of Sean's division standing behind me. He leant down and whispered in my ear. He said, you're a beautiful woman. I didn't even know what to say. I didn't know if he was serious, so I giggled a little. He leant in again and kept whispering, Kirsty, I know that you and Sean are having problems. I can help. I asked how, and he said, they've chosen somebody else for the new position, but I can choose whoever I like and I can pick him. I stayed silent, waiting to see what deal he would make me. His hand became a little heavier on the small of my back, and he continued, I've been looking at you all night. I want to make love to you. I turned to tell him where to go, and he interrupted me. Don't say no yet. Just think about what this job means to Sean. One night with me, and you're set. Think about it. And he walked away. I stood for a few seconds trying to gather my thoughts and dissect what had just happened to me. Eventually, I dragged Sean home, but having sobered up upon hearing Tom's proposal, I had a sleepless night lying next to him, wondering if long-term financial security was enough to betray my husband for. Was it even betrayal? It was for him as well. The next few days were spent discussing the state of our mortgage and how we needed him to get the job to save the house. How could I tell him that there was no way he was going to get it unless I gave myself for him? I knew that there was only one thing I could do. One day when Sean had left for work, I went through his address book and found Tom's mobile number. I called him and said that I would give him what he wanted in exchange for Sean's promotion. He called me back a few minutes later and gave me the address of a motel where we would meet. For the next hour, I let this middle-aged man use my body as he liked on the promise that he would hold up his end of the bargain. We left the motel, and I sat in my car for another hour crying. Had I done the right thing? Would I be double-crossed? A few minutes after I eventually managed to start my car and drive towards home, my phone rang. It was Sean. I couldn't bear to speak to him, so I let it ring out and continued to drive. It rang again and I ignored it again. It was only the third time that it rang when I answered it. He breathlessly told me that he'd been chosen and would start his new job on Monday. We had been saved, I cried again. They were tears of joy with a lot of bitterness and regret mixed in. We were saved, but at what price? Sean has since proven to be one of the best employees that the company has. He's earned bonuses that he never would have had in his old role and looks set to be promoted again. But every time he proudly talks to me about his work and how successful he is, I have to look away in shame because I can never reveal the terrible secret about how he came to be there in the first place. 
Hey y'all, my name is Sarah, and I am 27 years old. I work as a business analyst in an IT company. At the company's annual conference, I got introduced to Godwin. Yes, I was fascinated by him, but I didn't think about it because he lived in another city, and a long-distance relationship was something that has never worked out for me. Just a few months later, we met again, and this time, we were both selected for the same project and would work in my office for three weeks. We both were good at work, and our bonding was going great. We both had an exciting time working together on the same project. After a few days, even before I opened my laptop, he was at my desk. It was then that I first felt that he too was attracted to me. Then we started having coffee together and also went to dinner after work. Not too long enough, we had gotten infatuated towards each other. We went for a road trip on the weekend, and that's when we got physically attracted. We both ended up falling in love with each other, and we formally started dating one another. My life seemed to be delighted, because I had the perfect job and amazing new boyfriend. Even though I knew that he would soon leave for his hometown, but somehow I was convinced we could sustain a long-distance relationship very well. And then, a few days before he was scheduled to fly out, he revealed his biggest truth that he had hidden until now. I became aware that he has been married for two years. Although Godwin wasn't happy in his marriage, I was left wreck and felt completely cheated. How could he hide such a big thing away from me? He being married made me crazy and I had to end everything with him. His project came to an end and he returned to his hometown. I went back to my usual pattern of working day and night, putting in all my focus on work, as I tried hard to forget all the wonderful moments shared with him. A few days later, he called me. I didn't want to speak to him, but the moment I heard his voice, I could tell he was very drunk. So I didn't disconnect the call. He told me why he hadn't mentioned his marital status. He thought I wouldn't be interested in him if I knew he was married. I have to admit, that was the truth. Honestly, I didn't want to start anything new again with him. He was married. He was another woman's husband, and I was just the other woman. Still, I somehow found a reason to give our relationship another chance. He told me that soon he will give divorce to his wife, and I believed him. I was skeptical, and there are examples of men who have lied about leaving their wives and never did. But I was blinded by my feelings for him. And my love for him was infinite. And I couldn't stop myself going towards him. Now the extramarital affair started. He would lie to his wife about work trips and visit me. And every time he would visit, it was such a special moment. I would never fail to ask him the question of when he would leave his wife. But all he did was to make excuses upon excuses. I didn't want our relationship to be hidden. I hadn't introduced him to my friends or family, and that bothered me so much. Things went on the same way for a year. He kept on with lying to his wife, just come to see and meet me occasionally. Gradually, I started getting used to the habit of staying without him, that when he wasn't around, I would be busy working. It got to the extent that I had almost forgotten that I was in an extramarital relationship with someone. Then, after a few months, I started feeling that it doesn't bother me so much if Godwin is not around. Even when I call him someday, he remains busy and never answers my call. Most of the time, I really needed someone very close to me. He wasn't there at such times. That was the time I met Alan. He had just joined the company where I was working and was interested in me. He wasn't married, so no sooner I started liking him and we started dating. I thought, if he could have a wife, why couldn't I have another boyfriend without telling him? Days passed on and my relationship with Alan was going very smooth. Godwin existence or in existence didn't bother me so much because I knew what I wanted. I dumped Godwin and decided to spend my entire life with Alan. Hey y'all, this is Sarah, and today I will tell you the story of how my twin's boyfriend made me pregnant by mistake. 
I broke into a cheesy grin as the DJ started to play my favorite song. Baby, you're a firework. I screamed along to the Katy Perry hit, surrounded by friends. Two girlfriends and I were at our favorite venue, celebrating the end of a long week. My twin sister, Jen, was supposed to come with us, but she had a headache and decided to stay home. This one's for Jen! We cheered with our glasses in the air as the track changed to a Sean Paul song. Midway through my gleeful boogie, I jolted as I felt a pair of hands loop around my waist. Hey you, the stranger whispered into my ear. I whirled around to see a stunning, dark-haired guy wearing a button-down shirt smiling at me. My cheeks flushed at his forwardness, but with a few vodka tonics in me, I embraced it. For hours we danced together, oblivious to the world around us. Do you want a drink? I asked as I emptied my glass. No thanks, I'm the designated driver tonight, he replied, but I love some fresh air. I followed him off the dance floor and we spilled out of the club and onto the street. I leaned against a wall as he drew a packet of cigarettes out of his pocket and lit one up. The chemistry between us was undeniable, even if we had only just met. Once he had finished his cigarette, he pulled me in for a pash. I've been waiting to do that all night. Come with me, let's go somewhere more private. Butterflies fluttered about in my stomach in anticipation as he led me off to a side street where he unlocked a red Holden Commodore. He opened the back door for me. After you, he said, and waved me in. In the car, things heated up quickly and it wasn't long before we'd ripped each other's clothes off and made passionate love. The windows steamed up around us and I tried not to think about what anyone passing by might see. Once it was over, I went to put my clothes back on. I can't believe we haven't done this before, he laughed. I wasn't sure what he meant by the comment, but I brushed it off. When we stepped out of the car, I decided to go home while he was going back to find his friends in the club. He pulled me in for a hug and kissed me on the head. See you later, Jen. Don't wait up, he said, before pulling away and strolling back up the street. I stood in stunned silence as I watched him walk off. Did he just call me by my sister's name? It suddenly dawned on me that the guy I had just slept with had mistaken me for my identical twin, Jen. We looked exactly the same, but her hair was shorter than mine. People mistook us all of the time. She too was a regular at the nightclub. I'd been too tipsy to even consider this as an option. I thought he just liked me. When he was being forward, I assumed he was just confident, but he thought I was someone he knew. I was mortified. Tears streamed down my face as I walked home. Jen had mentioned a boy she was seeing that she met at the club, but I never put two and two together. I had made a huge mistake, and I couldn't even tell Jen. It would break her heart. When I got home, I buried my head in my pillow and wept myself to sleep. The following day, I swore that I would keep the tryst a secret and never tell another soul what happened. As the weeks rolled by, I tried to put the whole ordeal behind me. Where did you sneak off to the other night? A friend of mine asked. Oh, I wasn't feeling too well, so I decided to go home. I lied. When she asked me if I was free to go for another night out, I checked my diary. As I scanned the dates, it dawned on me that I'd missed my period. I was five days late. My heart thumped as I raced to the chemist to pick up a pregnancy test. Surely I wasn't pregnant. When I got home, I peed on the stick and spent two agonizing minutes waiting for the result. As it came up, I let out a wail. It was positive. I hadn't slept with anyone since the boy in the club. His name was Jono, and he and Jen had become an official couple. How had I gotten myself into this mess? I decided I would tell people half of the truth. I would say that I slept with a guy after a night out at the club, but I didn't know his name. At the time, that was true. The following day, I knew I had to tell Jen. When I got to her house, I fumbled nervously with my sleeve as she answered the door. Jen, I'm pregnant. I slept with a guy on a night out, but I don't remember his name. It came out of my mouth like vomit. I looked down at the floor, ashamed. I didn't want to see the expression on her face. But she was so supportive. 
Sarah, that is amazing! You're going to have a mini-me running around. I couldn't be happier for you, she said. Her encouragement felt like a knife to the heart. She was being lovely, but I was stabbing her in the back. As my pregnancy progressed, her relationship with Jono went from strength to strength. They even planned to move in together. When she introduced us, I pretended I'd never met him. Every time I saw Jen, the truth was on the tip of my tongue, but I could never muster the courage to tell her. I wished she would just dump the guy so that the issue would just go away. But that didn't happen. At 38 weeks, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy, and I called him Brock. One thing I know is that I can never tell anyone who the father is. From the moment Brock was born, I fell in love, and he brings meaning to my life. For now, Brock and I have each other, and that is enough. Subscribe to this channel to watch more such videos, and press the bell icon for more updates.